Hello everybody, so another day, another step forward in the nuclear world. Uh, today we're talking about the UK. Uh, the UK pre-selects four SMRs for deployment in the United Kingdom. Now, how does this work? So there's this company that's called Great British Nuclear, and Great British Nuclear is basically a subsidiary of the, the UK government. Uh, they've been checking out offerings from Westinghouse, GE, Rolls-Royce, Holtec, NewScale, and EDF. And, and they have been looking in particular at their, uh, their small modular reactors. So the small modular reactors that you see named here, like the UK SMR, the BWRX300, the SMR300, and the AP300. Now, if you don't know what these are, uh, what I suggest that you might do is you can go down in my description below and you can you can check out these websites. So I've got uh, the link to the Rolls-Royce website. I've got a link to the GE Hitachi website, Holtec, and finally Westinghouse. And there you can get some some initial information about this stuff and in the future i will make sure that i get uh, get some interesting videos on these reactors online so that you can learn more now back to the news at hand so edf and new scale they basically dropped out and honestly i wasn't surprised because the the the, the reactor that edf was offering was pretty pretty premature uh, premature uh, in a sense that new ward i don't believe that new ward is a mature design new skill on the other hand is a very mature design actually they have a design certification in, in the united states and they even have uh, if i am not mistaken a license to construct a rea a, a reactor facility if they wanted to a power plant uh, but unfortunately, due to cost, uh, the, the clients dropped out and this basically pulled the backing from underneath this, this power plant that they wanted to build. Now, the interesting thing about new scale is that they want to build very small reactors, so not physically, because physically these reactors are actually pretty big. Uh, and I also believe pretty inefficient in terms of material usage. Um, but they wanted to build a swimming pool type building in which they could uh, basically in, in, in install these reactors uh, and, and then a whole row of these reactors would then together create a power plant that would be somewhere in the order of three, four, five hundred megawatts, depending on how many of these reactors that you put in. Now, the UK SMR is a bit of a, 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 a weird reactor in this regard because they are already pushing up towards 500 megawatts for their unit, uh, which if you're a purist, which I am not personally, I'm not a purist, uh, wouldn't make it an SMR. Now, personally, uh, the only thing that I care about is whether we can actually deploy these reactors. This is the only thing that matters to me. I don't think that anything else is is important uh, because uh, Seaver Wang is somebody who works for uh, the Breakthrough Institute in, in, in the United States. He has shown us what the material input is for an X300, and it turns out that the materials input for an X300 is on par with uh, the material efficiency for an EPR. And if that's the case, then I'm down for building whatever you can build. So you have the UK SMR, the BWR X300 from GE Vernova, the SMR300 from Holtec, which is a pressurized water reactor, and the AP300 from Westinghouse. So how is this relevant? So the GBN's role uh, or roles include the SMR selection and basically advising the government on policy. So basically what they want to do is that they want to help the government uh, create tenders for uh, nuclear power plants. And the tender is basically nothing but uh, here is a location that you may use. And if you build your, your, your power plant there, you can get uh, electricity at a set price. That's basically what a tender does. And, and it also say, says, listen, because it's, 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 it's something like, um, like an auction. So 
you start at uh, 100 pounds per megawatt hour, for instance, and uh, th then the government says, okay, who can build a nuclear power plant uh, and uh, have uh, the electricity come out at 100 pounds per megawatt hour? And then nobody raises their hands and then they say, okay, well, who can do it for $95 or 95 pounds? And who can do it for 90 pounds? And then it keeps going down and down and down and down un until... Uh, it reaches a point at which one manufacturer says, well, I think that I can do it for that price. Uh, and then it's basically auctioned off and the manufacturer plus the the power company who want to do this uh, get to use the site and start building a nuclear power plant. So that's basically uh, what the government does in GPN uh at basically gives advice to the government in order to make the best possible decisions. Now, the UK still has a target of 24 gigawatts by 2050, uh, though at this moment there's there, there are rumors that they might actually axe this uh, this uh, this this ambition, which would be which would not be great. Um, this is also very interesting. Uh, so more nuclear sites are needed beyond the current eight, allowing for private developers flexibility. Uh, when you just take a brief look at the UK's power infrastructure, so I've, I've made a list, this is my own, uh, my own map that you can see there's a whole lot of uh, nuclear power plants over here. That's more than eight, by the way. Uh, I guess that 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 some of these uh, sites are just uh, being decommissioned, but you can also see all these yellow uh, things that are these yellow markers on the map. Those are just power plants that are operational today, and when you look at these green uh, markers, those are sites where power plants have been decommissioned. So that could potentially become a site for a new nuclear power reactor now or a nuclear power plant now we're going to return to this screen later on so let's uh, continue on this uh, summary of what is going on um so currently the uk is trying to make sure that um getting uh, to getting to a practical deployment of a nuclear power reactor becomes uh becomes easier because it's it's really really hard to do uh, so that's what the fourth bullet point says. The focus is on simpler processes, smarter regulation and environmental consenting to meet targets because obviously you need to speed up, not 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 make it as slow as Hinkley Point C, uh, for instance, which is now almost two decades uh, still under construction after the decision was made to build the damn thing. Um, then they say, okay, the SMR selection process is progressing, right? So, and they're 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 uh, they're intent on 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 having in the end two or three technologies uh, that can be tendered in the UK somewhere. Uh, also, Wilfa, which is a site in the UK, uh, which used to be the site where they wanted to deploy an advanced boiling water reactor, is now uh, being considered for a, a gigawatt scale nuclear power plant. Uh, and, and here they say, well, it might even become a site suitable for an SMR. Personally, I would say go with the gigawatt uh, power plant because you are going to need a lot of them too. Uh, and finally, the final investment decision, which is basically the point at which you say, okay, we are sure we are going to build this thing. That's the moment when you go to the bank, you know, uh, I don't know whether you actually have to go to a bank or to your financiers and say, okay, listen, now we need, uh, now we need, uh, Two billion, uh, two billion to get started with the pro with, with this project. We're actually going to build it, and we want to finance the first phase of this construction. So here is our final investment decision. We are now committed. Uh, that's the moment when you start building, actually. So 2029, if they can make it, I'm assuming that all of these SMRs can be built within a time frame of, let's say, four to six years. 
Uh, so then by the end of 2035, they should have their first or, or perhaps first or perhaps a set of first SMRs operational in the UK. Uh, also interesting here is that you need to ensure that you have uh, some 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 um, uh, some political stability, so cross party commitment to nuclear. Uh, that's that's very important. Uh, both Labour and Conservatives are in favor of nuclear but you know the way that they have to balance out all uh, their budgets their 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 uh, government budget uh, sometimes may impact whatever they are planning next whether that is uh, military spending or whether that is spending on the national health service but it could also be uh, spending on nuclear which which could then be axed so uh, this cross party commitment that is something that i i, I agree with as it, that is very very important uh, and also something that might not be uh, clear to some people but the global demand for nuclear skills is high, uh, especially if we start tripling uh, all the capacity that we have today. So today we have like 500 gigawatts of nuclear capacity uh, installed that has to grow up to 1500 gigawatts by 2050. Uh, this also means that you need to train a lot of people in order to make sure that you can uh, construct these plants and manage the construction of these plants, but also manage the operation of these plants, which you know, it, it it takes some smart people to do. So you need to you need to train those people, and and, and this is something that needs to be highlighted uh, time and time again. And finally, industry collaboration is also critical because you really want to make sure that everything gets harmonized as 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 good as possible. We want to avoid what has happened with uh, Okuluoto and Flamanville and Vogel and VC Summers if the uh, if there was more uh, collaboration going on, if there was more emphasis on excellence and how to uh, deliver these projects instead of just, you know, uh, selling it to the, 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 the lowest bidder and saying, OK, I don't care whether you have uh, experience with nuclear or not, but you are going to construct my new nuclear power plant. Well, that's not going to fly in this day and age. Uh, and, and the problem is that we've seen this happen. Uh, I, I believe that it happened at Vogel. I believe that it happened at Okuluoto, where they basically started working with inexperienced people uh, inexperienced uh, project uh, pro project uh, companies and, and this has this has uh, caused some serious damage as you have seen now i'm going to have a a very brief look on the smrs in question let me first uh, mute the sound here there we go um I'm going to keep it very brief. I don't want to do an in-depth analysis of all these reactor technologies because honestly, I'm not a reactor technician. I'm not a nuclear engineer. Uh, and I think that these are very interesting uh, videos to make in the future where I collaborate with somebody who knows a lot about this stuff. Uh, but I can give you the, the, the part, not, not the particulars, but I can give you a global overview. So the UK SMR, which is the SMR that is being deployed, that is being developed by Rolls-Royce, is ahead in the UK in terms of regulatory engagement, which means that their uh, the the assessment of their technology and their ability to build the technology. Uh, they, they are now pretty far ahead in that category. But the question is, is the product ready to deploy by 2029? I, I think that it will be, but, you know, we're not, we're not certain. There are no practical, uh, practical projects on the way as we speak right now. The X300 is then, uh, again, ahead in practical terms because they have an ongoing deployment in Darlington, Darlington in Canada, which actually means that the technology is being deployed. They're actually building 
the power plant at this moment. Uh, that doesn't mean that they are ahead in terms of regulatory engagement because in the UK you have to prove that your reactor technology works, that you know how to build it, that you know how to operate it, uh, and all that stuff. That 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 requires a million pages of of of, uh, of 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 documents just to prove that you can do that. Then you have the AP300, which is a relatively new kit on the block. They say that it leverages AP1000 tech, so the the, the reactors that have been uh, completed at Vogel in Georgia. Uh, but I have personally, I don't have any idea how, how far they are in terms of regulatory reg regulations, uh, you know, with the regulatory uh, work uh, doing with the UK, uh, whether the technology is ready to deploy in 2029. Um, I mean, it's it's it, it, it sounds good, just like the X300. Uh, we leverage uh, technology that is already in use, but it doesn't guarantee that you have a product that you can deploy. And that's the most important bit. Does a regulator give you the green light to deploy your technology? And if you get the green light, then you're deployable. And that's the most important bit that there is. And finally, you have the SMR300. These are all very inspired names, by the way. Uh, the SMR300 from uh, by Holtec, it used to be a 160 megawatt unit, but now they've upped the megawatts to 300. And they have also been engaged in UK regulatory approval for the design. And the question again is, will it be able to deploy by 2029? Now, personally, I believe that they will, but you know, you never know. In the nuclear in the nuclear industry, anything can happen at this moment. So next we'll look at the sites available in the UK. Uh, because that's an interesting question that is, that is asked or that, that is being floated in front of us. Now, the blue tick marks, as you can see, those are the nuclear sites in the UK, all the way up north here. You have the Dune Ray uh, nuclear power reactors. Uh, here's one of them. And there's a lot of hullabaloo about this reactor, uh, uh, especially about how they are storing their uh, le legacy waste. Uh, then there is here, I believe that this is Hunterston. Yes, this is Hunterston 2 Magnoc reactors. And I believe that this here is a, uh, I have no idea what it is. It is squarish, Deuce and Babcock energy. Doesn't look like uh, any of the advanced gas cool reactors that I know. But in any case, this might be one of the sites that they will use in the future. Then we have here Tornes. Uh, these are the advanced gas cool reactors. As you can see, there's plenty of space next to that. So it stands to reason that 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 the UK is first going to pursue uh, existing nuclear sites to deploy uh, new nuclear reactors, especially uh, if there's uh, sufficient space. By the way, one interesting uh, thing that I I notice right now is that these nuclear power plants are constructed at former RAF bases. <laughs> so that's just the thing that I notice right now. And we can go on. Here's Haitian, right? This is this is a pretty cr crowded place, but I can imagine that maybe there is a way to to uh, to leverage the site at some point. Then we have here an old Magnox reactor. This is Wilfa. This is Wilfa. They want to uh, actually do a gigawatt scale nuclear power reactor deployment there. Uh, Going up from here, then we got some smaller reactors. These here are small. This is the site of Hinkley Point C, the largest uh, construction project in the UK at this moment. You can see that right now they're actually finishing uh, the, the inner containment of the first unit. And if we continue on our, on our quest, we see that there's more nuclear power plants everywhere. By the way, this is not a nuclear power plant. This should have been... Uh, highlighted in yellow. So, and then finally we, co we come here. So here's Dungeness, which is uh, completely uh, decommissioned these days. There's no power production there today, but as you can see, there's this big switch yard over here. Uh, maybe the, 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 the capacity is still there. They didn't tear, tear down any cables. 
And if they didn't, and if they are still on their way decommissioning this plant, uh, as you can see here, uh, this lot over here is pretty big and should be able to house another EPR or maybe uh, some set of uh, small mod modular reactors. Now, if we go up north here, this is this is uh, also a decommissioned site over here, on the Bradwell uh, power plant, and then finally we have a size well. This is size will B. This here is size will A. So this is one of the old gas cool reactors, no longer in use. This one is in use. And over here, this is the place where they're going to realize size will C. So this is a location where they are going to build large reactors. Now I have I had highlighted a couple of things that I thought were particular in, particularly interesting. So the first thing I wanted to highlight was here near Newcastle um, is, is this over here. So this here used to be a, a power plant and as you can see they are in the process of I believe that they are building something here, but it could also be that they're decommissioning it. I, I, I'm not entirely certain what is going on here. But if, they're, if they are actually uh, decommissioning this nuclear uh, or this, this power facility, what you can see is they have this uh, National Blythe substation over here. So the interesting bit about the UK is that their transformer yards are often uh, enclosed. They actually have uh, roofs over their transformer yard. So that's very interesting. And as you can see over here, this this I, I believe that this here used to be a coal plant, if I'm not mistaken. Now this is this is quite close to Newcastle, so that would be a very good place to do a new nuclear power plant. Um, let's see the other place that I saw. So here we have Blaith. There's Kings North. Uh, that's that's quite close to London actually. Uh, this is the Medway over here. Over here where you have the the Thames, and this is where London begins, as you can see uh, over here. This used to be, I believe, a coal-fired power plant. You can still see, see this, what you see over here, are, are actually uh, uh, conveyor belts. So a, a, a ship uh, carrying coal would, would, would uh, I, I don't know what you call it in English, would, 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 would dock here, uh, and then... Uh, conveyor belts would move all the coal that's in the in the ship all the way over here and then probably over here there would be uh, a place where they would store the coal temporarily and then it would go into the power plant using these conveyor belts over here i believe that you see the uh, the places where there used to be uh, cooling towers, but it's also possible that that used to be gas storage. I don't know exactly. But in any case, the same thing can be said here. Here you have this substation again. Um, so this looks to be a very interesting site for SMRs or maybe even potentially large reactors. And over here you see another uh, smaller uh, gas-fired reactor, uh, gas-fired power plant. Now, if you look at just the amount of sites where power plants are or used to be in in in, in the UK, you, you can you can see that it, I mean there's a le at least uh, two dozen uh, places where uh, decommissioned uh, power plants are. Uh, just just let, let us just check one of them. So here you have Didcot. Uh, this used to be a coal fired power plant. So what you get is you you get a large terrain with just asphalt or concrete. I don't know what it is. Over here you see here is uh, still a smaller gas uh, plant that's still operational, but in essence, power is still uh, produced at that site. Now this one is quite far away from uh, from from open open water because that's what you ideally want you want open water because you need access to cooling water so let's go to Bordeaux to pool over here uh, this here is quite encased as you can see in urban area but I I personally I would not be nervous uh, putting up uh, to x300 over here or something else uh, so I believe that there's plenty of spaces where you can actually start building uh, SMRs in, in the UK. Now, currently this side here 
which uh, used to house a coal-fired power plant, is being used as a staging place uh, to deploy uh, offshore windmills, as you can see, uh, which I personally don't think is a good use of the space. But people will probably disagree with me there about that. Now, um, if we go back to the problem at hand, so... UK still has a couple of nuclear power plants operational today. Uh, I believe it's around five gigawatts. They are completing in the process of completing Hinkley Point C, which is unfortunately turning out to be much more expensive again than it initially should have been. Uh, let's hope that they can finish this plant within the next two years and uh, make sure that they uh, keep the cost overruns at bay because otherwise who knows maybe some politician gets spooked and thinks that he can earn uh, you know earn some credits with the people by saying okay we stop doing nuclear because Hinkley Point C has cost us enough uh, so this is very important the UK government has to stand firm behind its 24 gigawatt ambition. They don't have to be led astray just by the disaster that Hinkley Point C is. Hinkley Point C is not going to be, uh, should not be seen as, uh, you know, the standard for nuclear energy. And secondly, what has to happen in order for the UK to keep committed to this 24 gigawatt is that these SMR developers really have to start delivering on their promise. If they say, if, the, if, if, if Great British Nuclear says we want to do nuclear by, uh, we want to have a final investment decision by 2029, then please Rolls-Royce or please Holtec, please GE Vernova, make sure that you can do a final investment decision in 2025 or 2026 or 2027, but make it sooner than 2029. Uh, just prove everybody wrong. Make sure that you can, that you show that you can deliver, that you can deliver faster than any other project that is currently underway. Yeah, so in order to make sure that SMRs are relevant, you have to earn your own relevancy. Because I'm no longer just uh, supporting SMRs for the sake of supporting SMRs. I am now supporting uh, you to show that SMRs are a viable nuclear technology. And that's that's just very important in this case. And I hope that the UK uh, gets to profit from the benefits that SMRs have on offer, which in my, uh, in my opinion are uh, more flexibility in terms of where you can site a nuclear power plant uh, and, and, and perhaps even a slightly faster deployment schedule than a larger equivalent reactor. So a pressurized water reactor or a boiling water reactor. Um, that those are the things that I that I think are, uh, are, are interesting about SMRs. I don't care that they are uh, cheaper or more expensive in terms of CapEx uh, compared to their larger brothers. I don't care whether their levelized cost of electricity is cheaper or, or slightly more than their larger brothers because honestly, we're not competing against each other. We're competing against wind. We're competing against solar. We're competing against uh, battery and all the stuff that comes with that so that's that's the goal we have to make sure that we use the best means possible the best means are nuclear and all the rest in my opinion is just that stuff and with that you have reached the end of this video please leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already uh, comment down below if you have something to add to the discussion and finally, I want to thank my Patreon supporters. And in particular, I want to shout out the Thorium Energy Alliance, uh, Carl Alex Pauls, Ken Caldera, Marco Frissen, Meredith Angwin, Peter Rummer, Ripudemon Malhotra, Stefan Nikolov, Steve, Timothy Maloney, and Alan Matzker. Thank you very much for your continued support. Uh, you make a world of difference for me and my family. And uh, thank you all for watching. And may the force be with you. Bye-bye.